Gordon Lee, Tex, Benick was an American saxophonist, singer, and bandleader. His career is a history of associations with bandleader Glenn Miller and former musicians and singers who worked with Miller. His band is also associated with the careers of A.D. Gourmet, Henry Mancini and Ronnie Doval. Benick also solos on the recording the Glenn Miller Orchestra made of their popular song, In the Mood, and sings on another popular Glenn Miller recording, Chattanooga Choo Choo. Jazz critic Will Friedwald considers Benick to be one of the major blues singers who sang with the big bands of the early 1940s. Early life Benick was born in Fort Worth, Texas. He started playing saxophone when he was nine, going from soprano to alto to tenor saxophones and staying with the latter. His first professional work was with bandleader Ben Young in 1935, but it was when he joined the Glenn Miller Orchestra three years later that his career hit its stride. Benick said, it seems that Gene Krupa had left the Goodman Band and was forming his own first band. He was flying all over the country looking for new talent and he stopped at our ballroom one night. Gene wound up taking two or three of our boys with him back to New York. Wanted to take but his sax section was already filled. Krupa knew that Glenn Miller was forming a band and recommended Benick to Miller. Whatever concerns Miller might have had about Benick's playing were quickly dismissed. Miller immediately made Benick his primary tenor sax soloist and Benick played all but a few of the tenor solos on all of the records and personal appearances made by the Miller Band until it disbanded in 1942. On the August 1, 1939, recording made of the Joe Garland composition, In the Mood, Benick trades two measure tenor solo exchanges with his fellow section mate Al Klink. Miller's 1941 recording of, A String of Pearls, also has Benick and Klink trading two measure tenor solo phrases. Benick appears with Miller and his band in the films Sun Valley Serenade and Orchestra Wives, both of which helped propel the singer, saxophonist to the top of the metronome poles. Tex Benick is listed in the personnel of the 1941 metronome all-star band led by Benny Goodman. In 1942, Glenn Miller's orchestra won the first gold record ever awarded for, Chattanooga Choo Choo. The song was written by Harry Warren and Mac Gordon as part of the score for the 1941 20th Century Fox movie Sun Valley Serenade which was primarily made for the purpose of putting the Miller Band in a motion picture. Tex Benick was the featured singer in the movie and on the Victor, Bluebird recording that also featured band vocalist Paula Kelly and the Modern Airs, a vocal group of four male singers, who were also regular members of the Miller entourage. Chattanooga Choo Choo, catalog number Bluebird 11230B, was recorded by the Miller Band at the Victor Recording Studios in Hollywood, May 7, 1941. Hoping to repeat the success of Chattanooga, the following year, songwriters Warren and Gordon composed I've Got a Gal in Kalamazoo for the Orchestra Wives score. That arrangement also featured Benick, the modern airs and band vocalist Marion Hutton in a not too dissimilar fashion. Not surprisingly, Kalamazoo became another hit record for Miller, Benick and the band though not to the extent that, Chattanooga, had been the year before. By then, the U.S. was involved in World War II and, Kalamazoo's, success was also short-lived partially because Miller disbanded his group only three months after the record was made and four months following the filming of, Orchestra Wives. When Miller broke up the band in August 1942 to join the Army Air Force, Benick played very briefly with Horace Height before joining the Navy himself, leading a Navy band in Oklahoma. While employed with Miller, Benick was offered his own band, as Miller had done with colleagues and employees like Hal McIntyre, Claude Thornhill and Charlie Spivak. Benick wanted to come back to Miller after the war and learn more about leading a band before being given his own band. Benick led two bands in the Navy and kept in touch with Glenn Miller while they were both serving in the military. By 1945, Benick felt ready to lead his own orchestra. Working with the Miller estate Glenn Miller went missing on December 15, 1944, while flying to France from England. After World War II, the United States Army Air Force decommissioned the Glenn Miller-led Army Air Force Band. The Miller estate authorized an official Glenn Miller, Ghost Band, in 1946. This band was led by Tex Benick who as time went on had more prominence in the band's identity. It had a makeup similar to Glenn Miller's Army Air Force Band, having a large string section. The orchestra's official public debut was at the Capitol Theatre on Broadway where it opened for a three-week engagement on January 24, 1946. Henry Mancini was the band's pianist and one of the arrangers.
Another arranger was Norman Lydon, who also previously arranged for the Glenn Miller Army Air Force Band. This ghost band played to very large audiences all across the United States, including a few dates at the Hollywood Palladium in 1947, where the original Miller Band played in 1941. The movie short Tex Benick and the Glenn Miller Band was released by RKO Pictures in 1947 with Lillian Lane, Artie Malvin and the Crew Chief's vocal group performing. In a slightly sarcastic article in Time magazine from June 2, 1947, the magazine notes that the Benick-led Miller Orchestra was playing at the same venue the original Miller Band played in 1939, the Glen Island Casino. Benick's quote about the big band business at the time closes the article. I don't know whether Glenn figured that times would be as tough. By 1949, economics dictated that the string section be dropped. This band recorded for RCA Victor, just as the original Miller band did. Benick believed that Miller had promised him his own band in the early 1940s, and this was his chance to have that promise fulfilled. Benick wanted a band with Benick's musical identity. Larry Bruff, an announcer for the earlier Glenn Miller radio show says, Benick would even set wrong tempos so as not to sound too much like Glenn. The Miller estate wanted a band that was primarily associated with Glenn Miller, playing the Glenn Miller songs in the Glenn Miller style. By 1950, Benick and the Miller estate parted ways. After Miller Benick continued to perform under his own name with no official connection to Miller. He enjoyed less success in the early 1950s, partly because he was limited to smaller recording labels such as Choral Records and partly because of competition from other Miller alumni and imitators such as Jerry Gray, Ray Anthony and Ralph Flanagan. A.D. Gourmet sang with the Benick Band in 1950. Benick appeared on Cavalcade of Bands, a television show in 1950 on the Dumont Television Network. In the latter part of that decade there was some revived interest in music of the swing era. Benick joined a number of other leaders such as Larry Clinton and Glenn Gray in making new high-fidelity recordings of their earlier hits, often featuring many of the original musicians. Benick and former Miller singers Ray Eberly, Paula Kelly, and the Modern Airs first recorded the LP Reunion in Hi-Fi, a 1958 choral records album which contained recreations of original Miller material. This was followed by others featuring newer songs, some performed in the Miller style and others done in a more contemporary mode. Among the best known is Christmas Serenade in the Glenn Miller style on Columbia Records, which has been excerpted on a number of holiday compilations. The singer, saxophonist continued working in the coming decades, appearing periodically at Disneyland. He also made the rounds of various talk shows that had musical connections, including those hosted by Merv Griffin and Johnny Carson. His appearances on The Tonight Show sometimes included duos with fellow Miller veteran Al Klink who was by then a key member of The Tonight Show Band. Ray Eberly recovered from his earlier illness and resumed performing with Benick and the Modern Airs for a period in the early 1970s. In 1972, Benick agreed to re-record some of his Miller vocals for Time Life Records set of big band recreations, The Swing Era, produced and conducted by yet another Miller alumnus, Billy May. During the 1970s and 1980s, Benick had a new band playing a style that resembled the classic Miller sound but with as much newer material as older. At one point he also toured with former Jimmy Dorsey vocalists Helen O'Connell and Bob Eberly. Benick suffered a stroke in the mid-1990s and was forced to give up the saxophone but continued to conduct and sing. In 1991, Tex Benick received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame with funds collected by co-leader Gary Toll. He settled in Costa Mesa, California and remained active toward the end of that decade, mostly touring the U.S. West Coast and still playing in something resembling the Miller style. In 1998 he launched yet another tour paying tribute to the Army Air Force Band. Death in 2000 Benick died from respiratory failure at a nursing home in Costa Mesa, California, aged 86 and was buried in Greenwood Memorial Park in Fort Worth, Texas. He was survived by his wife, Sandra, of Santa Ana, California. His saxophone is currently used by the Arizona Opry.